Glory to God. But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance or the height of his stature. Why? Because I have refused him. On what ground? For the Lord seeth not. Mm. For man looks at. Read it again. Man looks at what? And God looks at what? One more time. <laughs> this alone will help some sisters. Man looks at outward appearance. And it's man you want to marry, not God. God looks at the heart. But God does not need a wife. Man looks at outward appearance. This also will bless businessmen. Man looks at outward appearance. How is the outward appearance of your shop like? Beyond the message that the Bible is saying that God is also letting you know about the thinking of a man. All men that are here and all women, every day dress well. Man looks at outward appearance. You can lose contract because of your dressing. Man looks at outward appearance. You can receive no. <laughs> From a beautiful lady. Because you look like Yahoo Yahoo. <laughs> Man looks at outward appearance. But what we are looking at is that the Bible says God does not see as man sees. What a blessing. Why? He said, my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts, Isaiah 55, higher than your thoughts. As heaven is higher than the earth. So when we are born again and we allow the mind of Christ to operate through us, then we are able to see the way God sees. But it's good to know that from the word go, man looks at things the way they are. But if a man be in Christ, one of the major trainings that the Lord gives you is to stop looking at things from outward appearance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. Before we take our seats. Hallelujah. God is good. He has done me well. Why we look now in 1 Samuel, it was God alone that said that I don't see as man sees, but thank God for redemption. Now we are in Christ, and we too we don't see as mortal men see. So Paul is no more saying God here now, he's saying that why we, we, who are the we, we and God. We look not at the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are what? But the things which are not seen are eternal. God bless you, can have your sin. So there are things that are seen. There are things that are not seen. And the Bible said the things that are seen, they are just for a while. That's why God does not look at things that are seen. They disappear with time. They are not the real things. But he said the things that are not seen, they are eternal. Mm. Wow. We've been talking about seeing yourself the way God sees you. And then we're also talking about seeing the world the way God sees the world. Seeing people. We started with the Bible says, God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. So when God sees darkness, it calls light. And then we also said that the Bible says God, Romans 4, 17, it gives life to the dead. It calls things that be not as though they were. 
and that if any man be in Christ, one of the things that the Lord will do in your spirit is that you begin to speak according to your spirit, not according to what your optical eyes are seeing. Hebrews 11, 2. Always there are two things to see. Out of the appearance of the heart. The heart is by the spirit, out of the appearance by the optical eyes. What to see? I have 2,000 in the account. Says who? That is what you see physically. Hallelujah. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the words were framed by God. That word frame is the word chisel. The Lord chisel, count out the word by faith, by the word of his mouth. You can also craft your future by what you say. Now, the next part, so that the things that are seen were not made out of things that do appear. Whatsoever you can see, the Bible calls it something temporal. The Bible does not reckon with anything visible. So the Bible says that God made heaven and earth using invisible things, not visible things. Why? When God was about to start creation, the first thing he saw was darkness was upon the face of the earth. God did not talk about the darkness. He looked at darkness and he said, let there be light. It's like a man looking at an account that is 5,000 and he says, let there be 5 billion. Not that you know what, I don't have money. I don't know if somebody's hearing me this morning. Hallelujah. And there is this training. Because if you are going to go on a journey with God, He must train you this way. This is the only way to tap into your invisible account, which has more authority over your physical account. Jesus has perfected the work in the Spirit. To bring you to the physical, the first thing God will do is that He will not spare you from the way He trained Himself. God who called light out of darkness, he must train you also to call light. See, this is why we we'll get it. You also must be trained to call for light out of darkness. I will keep repeating, re referring to that scripture over and over again. Jeremiah chapter 1. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 1. Now, the Bible said, The words of Jeremiah, the son of Ikea, the priest that were in Anatot in the land of Benjamin. Verse 2. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, and in the 30th year, th 30th year of his reign. Verse. And then, let's go to verse 4, where the Lord started. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee, huh, there is a divine plan. Hallelujah. You are here in Lagos, living in Cape to living in Okera. Or Salera, or wherever you are in Lagos. But I am telling you that there is more to your life than what you are seeing. Jeremiah was a young guy who just sat in Anathoth. The prophet sat down there to sat down with them. All he ever knew was that he was a son of Ikea. Now, there was no revelation, no angelic manifestation when Jeremiah was born. He had no clue at all of whom God has made him. So he was just sitting down with others. And one day, the word of the Lord. What is coming to you this morning? Some are not responding. This is not a church you come to and you are quiet. Just looking. Hallelujah. The word of God said, before I formed thee. You know what this tells you? God would have written a script. He will now form somebody to play the script. So there's nobody here that before you were formed, something was not already drafted out for you to fill. You are not here by chance. There is a plan. You might have not known. Jeremiah should be like maybe 18 or 21 about this time. Maybe the first 17 years of his life, there was no resemblance of anything supernatural, anything spectacular about him. You are listening to me this morning, here physically on TV, or you are watching, you are listening, you are watching uh, on, on the net. You've been to primary school, secondary school, nothing in your life. You hear those who say a prophet told their mom that she shall give back to a, a, a great son. You know people like Samuel and all those names. But your own life, nobody prophesied to your mom. You just came and started taking selling life and about it. Wow. And you are wondering, is there anything? It's Apple Jeremiah. Thank God for those like Moses 
that a lot was said about them when they were born. Thank God for people like Samuel. But thank God for also people like you. Fire. He shocked Jeremiah. God said, hey, you went to secondary school, you went to university. Today I'm telling you, before I formed thee, you play table tennis, sometimes you fight people, sometimes you even do some wrong stuff. It did not occur to you that you were not just sent here. There is a script. Before I formed you, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of your mother's womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto nations. Ah. Oh, calling the things that be not. This guy had not given out one prophecy. And God said, not a prophet of Okera. Not a prophet of Adeni Jones. He said, a prophet unto nations. Jeremiah must have been like, I have never seen any revelation in my life. The same thing when God appeared to Gideon. He said, you mighty man of valor. He was talking to a guy that was hiding. Who was the last born of his family. There is something about how God constructs his words. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will get there in a while. How I wish parents would start speaking like God. Mm. Because the Bible says, be imitators of God. And that you look at the one that appears not to be brilliant and tell that you are the one that will build universities. He said, I say, oh Lord, don't you? And they knock on his head. They said that to many people. Oh God, haven't God done enough to prove people wrong? That of all private investors in the world, I was told that there's not owned by a professor. In secondary school teachers, we applaud some people, they are the brilliant ones because they are scoring 95. Most of them will finish school, may become lecturer or do it's good to do well in school, no doubt about that. But you see, the plan of God is bigger than that. There are guys at the back of the class that nobody records with. When it is over in school, that is when they start manifesting. And when you tell your children that you were carrying first in school, it carries no weight nowadays. Now, story. All parents say to me, all of them carry first. Have you noticed? All parents were leading their class. Only God knows who, were, who was carrying second then. Because all our parents were first position. So that means if there were 15 in the class, all of them came for no, no second position. Because that's what they all told us that we, in our days when we were in school. So who are the people that were carrying third, fourth in the school in those days? <laughs> Bless God for our parents. <laughs> they said nothing to motivate us. <laughs> and they don't know that. At times in our naughty mind, we do ask questions. Only that you don't say it out because you know what will happen. You won't live to ask again. But it's not your heart. As they are telling you, they go, you are wondering. <laughs> really? That's why we are here. <laughs> 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 but you dare not, you know. Somebody told me a story one time when they were doing prize giving day in the school. The father brought one jalopy, he was a very poor man, just the one rekete car. And they were calling some students who were winning prize in agriculture, prize in science, prize in math, prize in. And they didn't call this man's son. As they were, so he sat beside his father. The were, father was very poor. Boy, he sat as they were calling the names. Emeka. We know mathematics. That one, we know of English. The father will say, hey, those are children. He said, he's sweeter in Yoruba, but let me say, oh, those are children. Those are, he will look at the boy. Those are children. Those are children. And he had this nice time. He said all that to wash down the boy. But as they were driving out of school, one of the parents of the boy that won the best award, one of the people that won that, one of the parents, also was driving an exotic car. And we overtook them. And the boy too looked at the father. I said, those are fathers. <laughs> but you know, if you tell your father that, <laughs> that will be your last sentence on the face of the earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. If <laughs> somebody will be, glory to God. This aspect of God, go back to Jeremiah. Imagine the, how God is talking to this. Even when Jeremiah heard, verse 6, look at what he said. Then he said, ah. <laughs> is that someone's expression this morning? What if I tell that nations are waiting for you? These are no fallacies. This is the scripture. 
The word of God will work for anybody that accepts the word. The word of God will work for anybody that accepts the word. If you come out poor and the word of the Lord meets you and it says you are the richest man on earth, the only reason why it will not happen if you reject it. If you turn back and you say, you know what, I'm the richest man, from that day, well, to begin to follow you. Obedience to the word. Obedience to God. It pains God when people don't believe him. Because people look at external circumstances. They look at things that they can see. So even Jeremiah said, ah. <laughs> and he said, Lord, behold, I can't speak. That means he had never done it before. I'm a child. Lord, I don't even have visa. You say I'm a prophet unto nations. <laughs> I have not passed my village before. So Jeremiah did not even say it was God. He, he protested. Thank God for the word. The Bible puts it there. Ah, he said, ah. Hey, Joseph. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> prophetic word. I can't speak. Number one. Number two, I'm just a boy. What do I know? And the Lord said, next verse. Say not that I'm a child. Let me look at your neighbor. Say there is a way not to talk. There is a way not to talk. Ah. Lord, don't let me get ahead of myself. Ah. When they located my, the five fish, the five loaves and two fishes, they found it all. They added a wrong statement to it. They said just that what is this among so many? There is a way you must not talk. And Jesus said, Let me show you what this is among so many. He said, Bring it. The Lord quickly warned him that don't say you are a child. He said that for thou shalt go to all that I send thee. Whatever I command you, you will say. Look at the next verse. Now this is powerful. Don't be afraid of their faces. Verse 9. The Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And he said, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. That means the way to accomplish this is that the word of God must be in your mouth. When the word of God is in your mouth, what will happen next? This next verse is powerful. See. Ah. Uh, you know, from what you've been sharing all this day, so many people try to get God to see from their perspective. And God never responded to anybody. Moses said to God, I see, I must uncircumcise. God said, no. See, I am made you a God over Pharaoh. Now, this one too was said, God, Lord, see, I'm a child. God said, no, let me show you how to see. You are looking at the wrong, you are seeing wrongly. This is what you should see. He says, see, I have this day said to over nations, ah, over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. Oh God. I don't know somebody seated somewhere at the back. What is the word of Lord communicating to you this morning? One thing is certain. For everyone at the sound of my voice, it's not the same person that came inside this world that will go back home. This is how God forms great people. There's no other way. And when you begin to see the way it is, let me show you something that happened. I think it's in uh, uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 9. Honestly speaking, it wasn't supposed to be David compulsorily that should be the one to kill Goliath. That was why he came later. Something happened to all of them. Let's start from verse, verse 7. Goliath was very wise. They described his outward appearance. The staff of his spear was like reverse beam and the end of the spear. Those were the things that intimidated the verse 8. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel. Men and brethren, if your Bible is yours, underline the word army. Who did he cry to? The Bible is describing, the Bible is here to talk about what he said. So, this first part is not from the perspective of Goliath. It's from the perspective of the writer. The writer is saying that Goliath came out and said something to the people. Now, he began to say what Goliath now said. Now, from why? This one is now Goliath. He said, why are you trying to fight? Am I not a Philistine? Did they go and show me this? And you, you are servant of Saul, were they? 
oh God. When Satan wants to operate the life of a Christian, he gives you a name that God has not given you. It makes you to think less than what, who God has made you. Why do people even commit sin? In the secret. In the secret. When you believe that you are actually a believer, you will not struggle against sin. You will just stop. You just know that this is not me. I can't continue to go to this girl's house and do this. This is not me. I can't do things that nobody should hear about. That when they hear about, the Bible says you are unreprovable in the sight. You are made perfect in the sight. If you believe it, you'll start living in the light. That there cannot be anything around me that I'm not proud of. So why should I corner a girl? I begin to misbehave. Your life goes beyond that. And I can't just do this. There's no amount of money you are bribed with to say it's below you. Why? You have true riches. Before the devil gets people into corruption, he first of all gives them a picture of a future without money. I get what I'm saying. Yeah. A man spoke to me one time. Or maybe somebody that knew spoke to me. They brought 500 million naira to his house. They brought it in cash. He could not sleep in the night. He rejected it, but the people that brought it said that when they said we should give you, they, they, you know, some of those dirty people, when they want to tempt you with money, they will send soldiers. And soldiers have a rule. They obey the last order. So the soldiers dropped the money and said, sir, we can't take it back. They said we should bring it here. And they said, this is the post that said we should bring it. You know him, you have his number. You call him. If he says we should come and pick it, we will come and pick it. But we cannot act on our own. Instead of dropping, take it back. And they were right. And they brought it like 11 in the night. The purpose was for the money. But there are some devilish men. For the money to pass a night, then you will know that money has a voice. Then the man began to think about school fees on children. How they go and do masters abroad. They told him. And a part of him said, why don't you just collect the money and run away? Thoughts will start coming. If the enemy can successfully give you a picture that the future is bleak, this is your chance. You will likely fall for that temptation. If you have a picture that I am rich without the contribution of any man, you will not fall for temptation. There are unbelievers who even have this mentality. This is where Satan starts. Are you with me? Praise the Lord. If you can convince a young lady that you will never be able to buy a car on your own, you better marry this guy. Even though he's very insulting, very abusive, you will know inside your heart that this guy does not love you. But he has a comfortable apartment and he has a comfortable car and you, he carries you from time to time. This is the only reason why a woman will stay in an abusive relationship. You are not married to somebody. He's already giving you insult as breakfast. A few times he hits you. No regard for your parents. You know he doesn't love you. But you are there because he has substance. What you are saying to the spirit realm is that I cannot make it on my own. I better depend on him. Did you hear what I just said? Can anybody still hear him? Can anybody hear me? Bless God for rain. Are you following me? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. David said, oh, Goliath said, you are servant of Saul. They were not servant of Saul. Show me when David came to the scene. David said that, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Defying the armies of God. Ah. Look at perspective. The reason why no man could fight him, they all saw themselves as servants of Saul. And no servant of Saul could fight Goliath. When David came, he said, I am not a servant of Saul. I'm a soldier of the army of the living God. He said, see. Can you see the word see again? Everything in life is about perspective. David said that what I am seeing is that I am seeing a man who is insulting the armies of God. Armies of the living God. It was like number one, we are soldiers. Number two, we are not 
mere soldier. We are soldiers of the living God. I am not a servant of Saul. I'm a soldier and a soldier of Jehovah. That alone, instead of fear, it was anger that David showed towards Goliath. But the rest, Goliath spoke it over their head. You are servant of Saul. By physical identification, like Paul said that he was from Benjamin, he was a tribe of this and that, we are Nigerians. But in the spirit, I'm not a Nigerian. If it annoys people, Christian choice of face, we let them get angry. We are bigger than the nation. Why? I am from another nation. I'm a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people called out of darkness to light. That's the truth. So we are not bound or condemned because we live here. By the grace of God, I can live in any nation, but I am here. Our family is here. We are not bound, we are not condemned because we live here. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mentality. 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 You shall man. I don't know. You know, one day, oh God, you hear black, black American singers, actors, it's very common. We are black. They discriminate against us. They say this. One day I was watching an interview by Morgan Freeman, one of the oldest actors alive. Black man. I watched a woman interview that as any white or anybody, he said not once. He said, I don't put myself in any position where anybody will talk me that because I'm black. Go and look at the movies he has acted. But the mentality of some other black, ah, we are black, we are black. That's why they do this. That's why they do Where there is excellence, there's no discrimination. If you are the only daughter that can cure HIV, what UN will invite you, WHO will invite you, there's nothing they can do about it. Begin to live up to the name that God has given you. Let wonders begin to come from your life. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Thank you. Are you following me? Glory to God. Let me begin to stop here. Oh God. This is the pattern you will see all through the Bible. I will show you something. When they told Jesus that what is this among so many? I think that's Matthew 14, 19. Jesus did something. Can I have your Bible? Give me Matthew 14, 19. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah. They are trying to boot again. Okay. To you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. You know, there were people in Africa that white gave mirror to and took their children as slaves. They gave them. So before they start saying that white came to oppress us, we should also say that we contributed to it. Some people sold their own people. But I want to show you something. This is what makes people to be in this state. When they brought the bread to Jesus, so the disciples sir. Uh, they look at 5,000 people and they say, what can this do among so many? So Jesus, these five loaves is the game plan. Jesus did something. He commanded them to sit down. And he took the five loaves and two fishes. What did they do? Everybody say it. What's the next word there? I want to hear everybody. What's the next word there? Everybody, what's the next word there? Some are still not responding. What's the next word there? Shout the word looking. Say look. Say it again. Every time 
they were looking at what Apostle Paul said, that why we look not at the things that are seen. They saw five loaves and two bread. They were looking at it. They gave it to Jesus. Jesus lifted it up and looked up. Genesis 21. About Agai. Genesis 21. Um, maybe about 17 or so. And God heard the voice of the Lord. And the angel of the Lord said, Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord. Next verse. Arise. Lift up the lad and hold him in your hand. I will make him a great nation. What was she told to do to the lad? I need everybody to respond, please. Can you at the back hear me? Can anybody hear me? Okay. If at the far back you hear me, can you wave? If you're hearing me, okay, good. I just want to go. This story, this is. Lift up the child. Lift up the child. I will make him a great nation. Which child? This was the story of Ishmael. There was no water. Ishmael was dying. So the mother pulled down Ishmael under the tree and went to sit down. I don't want to see the death of my child. But when the angel will respond, the angel told her, if you can take the child and lift up the child, we will make the child a great nation. Why? Whatever you lift up multiplies. So when they gave Jesus the five loaves, he could look down on the loaves, five, it can't be enough. Or he could take the loaf, he could lift it up, it will multiply and fill people. Every talent in your life, even your family and your background, you can look down on it or you can lift it up, it will multiply. The choice is yours. Let's rise. Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to implore you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.